When we were young, my brothers and I shared a room. Those two were great at making shadow puppets come to life. Tyler could make a soaring hawk and John a fearsome wolf. Me? I was never able to make anything that looked remotely like something. Now before you start harking on me and telling me how easy it is and I should have at least been able to make a bunny, keep in mind that John can't snap his fingers, so I'm not the only failure in the family. My brothers never made me feel bad about my shortcomings, but I felt a little sad all the same. I'd watch as they'd tell stories with their shadow puppets, and wait to join in on games of shadow tag we'd play until one of us fell asleep. Everything changed the day we moved to a bigger house. We all got our own rooms, mine being the smallest since I was the youngest, and our nightly games came to an end. I'd practice making shadow puppets on my own in the hopes that I would eventually learn and impress my brothers. But no matter how hard I tried, I never really got any better. One night, I'd stayed awake, practicing later than usual, knowing my brothers and I were going to have a weekend sleepover. I was exhausted, my head bobbing, my eyelids drooping, but something suddenly snapped me awake. A shadow crept into view from below. Much like my own puppets, it wasn't a distinctive shape. It was an upright large oval with eight little tentacles wiggling out from the top. I managed to mimic it by bringing my hands together and crisscrossing my fingers. The shape bloomed like a flower, opening wide and then snapping shut. It kind of reminded me of a Venus flytrap. Thinking it was one of my brothers hiding under my bed, I called out. Tyler? No reply. John? Still, nothing. It's not funny, guys, I whimpered. The shape opened and closed twice. I put my blanket up to my neck and slowly pushed myself to the edge of the bed. Even though I fully anticipated I'd find one of my brothers hiding under there waiting to jump out at me, even though I was ready for it, I was still nervous and tense. It was like watching the villain of a horror movie slowly creep towards its heroine, knowing full well what's going to happen, but being anxious all the same. The fear was palpable. I could feel my heart thrashing and throbbing like a trout out of the water. I took a deep breath, braced myself, and looked under the bed. There was nothing there. Just dust bunnies and the robot toy I lost earlier that week. I tilted my head back up and looked at the wall. The shadow puppet was still there, snapping its maw open and shut over and over again. Then, suddenly, it darted closer to my shadow and I quickly pulled my torso back onto the mattress, turned off the light, and hid under my blanket until I passed out. Come morning, I dismissed it as being a bad dream. That night, I showed off the cool Venus flytrap shadow puppet I learned to make thanks to that nightmare. The heck is that supposed to be? complained Tyler. John laughed. Lame. Ugh, <sighs> the L word. They weren't pulling any punches. I couldn't have felt any more uncool if I was forced to go to school with suspenders and braces. Still reeling from the soul crushing roast I received at the sleepover, I spent the rest of the week trying to perfect my craft, but kept falling asleep before I had much time to practice. Then, one night, the buzz of my flashlight woke me up. I opened my eyes and saw its flickering halo on the wall, but didn't find it on my bed. It had somehow fallen on the ground without waking me up. A weird shadow was slowly inching from one side of the illuminated circle to the other. It had long ears, a spindly body, and a morphed tail shaped like a question mark was petrified. And then, it got smaller as the thing casting the shadow moved farther away from the source of light and closer to the wall. My cat came into view and stared at me as though trying to say, what the heck is your problems, man? That would have been a good time to let out a spring of explicatives, but at that age, even in my most private of moments, I didn't dare utter those words. 
I was still at the age where I thought my mum literally had eyes in the back of her head. Hell, I'm an adult now, and I'm still not convinced she doesn't. My cat disappeared from view, but I could tell where she was based on her shadow. She started darting back and forth and pouncing on nothing in that way cats tend to do for no good reason. Since she seemed to want to play, I stretched my hand out over the side of the bed and wiggled my fingers, unsure whether she'd go directly for them or for their long shadow on the wall. She seemed torn between the two, at times throwing herself at the wall like a bird in a newly cleaned pacho door and at others nuzzling my fingertips. I stopped moving when I saw the Venus flytrap shadow emerging. At that point, my cat was out of view again. Her shadow showed her standing sideways, looking at the new shadow curiously. I heard her hiss and saw the hairs on her body rise like a mohawk. In one fell swoop, the Venus flytrap opened, darted towards the shadow, and snapped shut halfway through. I jumped, let out a yelp, and looked over the side of the bed. I wish I hadn't. I could have spared myself a lot of hurt if I just... closed my eyes right then and there, and pretended I hadn't seen anything. Instead, I have a mental image of it now. An image I'll never be able to wash from my mind until the day I die. I should have known better when I saw only half of my cat's shadow being cast on the wall. But I looked anyway. I looked, and I saw her still twitching hind legs attached to the lower half of her body. Then, I watched as the Venus flytrap bit down on what was left of her shadow, and her body disappeared. Nothing was casting that shadow. I was looking at the floor the whole time. There was nothing there. I threw my blanket over the flashlight and cried myself to sleep. It took my parents about a week before they told us our cat had gone missing. I didn't tell them the truth. I might have been a stupid kid who couldn't even make a proper shadow puppet, but I knew better than to say anything about it. They'd think I was nuts, or tell me that I was dreaming. We put a post this and then went through the stages of grief. Tyler was angry at first. John refused to believe she was gone. As for me, I just felt numb. The secret weighed on me. But the fear of telling and the fear of the shadow in my room weighed even heavier. I slept in complete darkness. No night lights, no hallway lights, no half-open blinds. I was terrified of the shadows. The only place that was safe from the shadows was in darkness. Because the only thing that can cast a shadow is light. This went on for about a month before we had our next sleepover. And by then, pretty much everyone had accepted our cat wasn't coming back. It was late. But the three of us were wide awake from the plethora of Halloween candy we'd snuck out of the kitchen when our parents weren't watching. I was afraid from the moment Tyler turned on the flashlight and proposed we make shadow puppets. No, I want I want to sleep, I whispered, hoping he'd turn the light off. Tyler snorted. What are you, five? Come on, let's play. John kicked me in the shin. I don't want to, I croaked. Lame, said John. Leave him alone, replied Tyler sternly. His voice softened as he addressed me. If you want to sleep, then sleep. We're playing. I closed my eyes and turned away, trying to ignore them as Tyler's hawk and John's wolf flew around the room. They were laughing and making their shadow puppets play fight. And then... They suddenly stopped. Don't do that, John scolded. Tyler replied, It's not me! David, stop! It's not funny! What? I replied. I was confused. I could tell they were upset, but I didn't know why. At least, not until I saw the feline shadow casually trotting from one flashlight's halo to the other. It pounced at Tyler's hawk and poured at John's wolf, just like our cat used to do. I felt my stomach drop and bounce back. Like my guts were made of bungee cord, I tried to tell them I wasn't projecting it. I tried to remind them I sucked at shadow puppets, but they kept shouting at me to stop and getting more and more upset until they finally turned off their flashlights. 
Not funny, I heard John grumble. I'm going to sleep, added Tyler. I remember the way they looked at me the next morning. Their eyes were so full of animosity that I felt like a nerd trying to sit at the cool kids' table. I think my mum talked to them later, because they eventually stopped treating me like a leper and slowly started including me in their games again. They never played with Shadow Puppets again, though. At least, not with me. We grew up, like people tend to do. John moved away, our parents sold their house to Tyler so they could move into a smaller place. Tyler got married and had kids, and I became that weird person with three cats and no social life. A few weeks ago, Tyler's wife called in a panic and asked if I'd seen him. Long story short, he'd gone missing without a trace. Sure, their marriage had been on the rocks for a few years, but I knew Tyler well enough to know he wouldn't leave his family. I drove over to their house, to my old house, and tried to help as much as I could. I knew right from the moment I stepped through the door and saw his youngest daughter. I knew what happened. I recognized the numb look in her eyes as my sister-in-law grimly welcomed me in. I slept in my niece's room that night, with a flashlight tucked under my armpit just to be sure, while the kiddo slept with her mother. Once everyone was asleep and the house was quiet, I flicked the flashlight on and waited. I found the Venus flytrap in a corner. A hawk flew across the ceiling. And my cat came running after it. In an eternal game of shadow time.